I just I stopped writing things down when it came to melody, and that changed my life. This is Tory Lanez, one of the most interesting artists of the last decade. Tory has mastered a lot of sounds when it comes to music, so you never know what to expect. A lot of artists tend to get their Pro Tools sessions leaked, like Kendrick, Drake, Travis Scott, Don Tolliver, Juice WRLD for sure, Playboy Cardi. But it's been very quiet when it comes to Tory Lanez. So with that being said, I went on a mission to see what our information I can find for the people that want to sound like Tory Lanez. This ain't no fake preset. This ain't no fake template. We're gonna do the science. Part one, the gear that can be verified. The microphone that Tory Lanez record with is the Neumann U87. So if you're gonna try to sound like Tory Lanez, you gotta start with the microphone. If you can't afford the microphone, find a microphone that is similar. And what I mean by similar is the mic pattern. This is the frequency response of the Neumann U87. This is without the low cut. So the line goes up and then it's gonna be a little flat right here from 100 to the 500. It's gonna go down a little bit around the 1K. It's gonna be a little bit of a boost right here to 2k then it's going to go down a little bit and then it's going to go up into this curve so it's going to cut through a little bright within this range right here then it's going to slowly go down after the 10k so you're not going to get that air right here so, and then if you use the low cut here it's going to cut a lot of that low out right there as we see right here the low end still is beginning to fall from 70 hertz but with a steeper curve leading to an 8 db drop at the bottom of the frequency chart the headphones that tori records with are the audio technica ath m 50x i haven't found any clear video showing the gear that he's recording through but i'm trying to pull some strings behind the scenes i'm talking to a couple people that got toy credits and i'm trying to see what he records through part two tori lane doesn't record or mix his song he has a team of engineers that are locked in with him and they collaborate together just to do a quick check these are the credits for Tory Lanez. I want you to pay attention. It's going to let you know he's the author, he's the composer, lyricist, producer, lyricist, vocal, writer, producer, composer, lyricist, writer, writer, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Author, lyricist, writer, writer, producer, writer, 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 not mixing engineer, not tracking engineer, not mastering engineer. Yeah, that's just some of the credits. So while I was doing some research, I stumbled upon this article from one of his engineers. Tory Lanez has released one project every year since 2009. Michael Romero has only been one of Tory Lanez's main recording engineers for a few of those, but has already seen his superstar level work ethic. What did you have to learn about Tory in order to work with him? Tory's a team. Tory is pretty much deciding the direction he wants to go with music, but it's a whole team that makes him Tory. I'm not trying to take anything away from him. When I first got brought in to work with Tory, his producer, Play Picasso, was like, I sort of just want to focus on producing. The first few sessions were a bit rough. I was adjusting to his workflow. He works fast. Adjusting to his workflow and him adjusting to my rhythm was a bit rough at first. But we got through it and it's sort of flawless. We could do 7, 10, 12 songs a night. For the record, his main engineer is Johan Chavez. And right here we see a picture of Tori and Mike in the studio together. And what I was trying to look at right here was the gear that they got in the studio. I see a Nintendo Switch right here. Um, but I see a 2 tech here. I think this is the Summit Stay Level right here. And I think this is the Avalon. And I think this is probably something else. Like a, I don't know. I was just looking, trying to see what gear they had right here in the studio. And we can also verify that that is a U87 right here. Just let me paint you a picture of the creative process of how Tory Lane works. He's like, all right, play me some beats. We go through the beats. And while I'm going through the beats, he's rolling up a blunt already. He'll go next, next, next. Wait, hold up. He'll start flowing with the beat and then we'll go, nah, next, next, hmm, okay. He starts vibing, he's still rolling his blunt and then he goes, okay, put this in. I load it into Pro Tools and get the mic leveled and everything. As he's walking into the booth, he's licking the blunt to silly. He gets in the booth, puts on the headphones and goes, okay, play it for me again. Then he likes the blunt. Yo, bring it back. Then he goes and starts writing the song there in his head. Then 15 to 30 minutes later, the song is done. Sometimes if we're spending a lot of time on the song, he gets to the point where he's done with his blunt and we'll go, shit, hold up. I have to roll up again. So from that, what do you really think? Do you have what it takes? What's your process when it comes to picking beats or choosing the beats? Like, what are you doing? Part three, how Tori found his sound. Tori Lanez couldn't sing to save his life. That's just not me talking shit. This is just something that came out of his mouth. I used to suck at singing, though. I couldn't sing for shit, actually. But at the same time, I was somebody. Who, you heard him. He said he couldn't sing for shit. I wasn't lying. Who wanted to become great at all, all of my craft. And I felt like when I was asking these dudes to sing on my songs, like nobody wanted to sing on my songs because I wasn't popping. So I was like, you know what? 
I'm going to just teach myself how to sing, and I'll sing on my own songs. And I sucked for a long time, you know what I'm saying? But I kept on singing more and more and more and more. And just like, you know, a muscle in your arm, your vocals are, 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 are a muscle. You know, your vocal cords are muscles. So at the end of the day, like, I just started singing more, and it, it got better. A lot of artists struggle with this. They think that the preset, the template, is going to make them a better singer, deliver better, just be a better artist overall. Tori didn't mention anything about a microphone, a preset, a template, a better DAW. He didn't, he didn't mention nothing of that nature. I developed, I developed all these voices because I never had a, a vocal coach. Like, I, like, so... The way I was taught to sing was like I would listen to as many singers as I as I could, and I would just try my best to do my voice like them, and I would try my my best to make my voice how they did their voices, and because of that, it taught me how to have this deep voice that sounded like you know some singer over here, and then also to come back and then be able to sing so high. Like I used to listen to the Dream a lot, and when I when I used to listen to the Dream. He was always had these like high, like tropical sounding ad libs. Eh, you know what I'm saying? But it was all it, it was one of the main things that kind of helped me have that high part of my sound. Like it really came from the dream. Like you know what I'm saying? Like me listening to um, all his records and just his albums and just going through them and hearing them. Um, the deep voice really came from like one day I was listening to Pac and I was like, what what separates Pac? The deep voice didn't come from a preset. It didn't come from mixing. It came from him studying music. Let's keep it going. From everybody else, like, why do I feel his music so much? And I realized it's the way he was saying things, like, like, they know that those be so nice, what telling them? Just like, just like the pain in his, like, you know what I'm saying? And then that's when it caused me to start with the, like, the, the Lord knows and like the, like that, that, uh, no, that comes from that. I got that from Pac. Like, that's what Pac taught me. It's the projection in his voice. And it was... Projection in the voice. The delivery in the voice. How you say things. Make people connect with the music. I don't be lying to y'all, bro. I be keeping it honey. Because if you want to sound like Tory, record like Tory, it's going to take more than figuring out his vocal chain, all right? He's telling you himself. It was from that point when I started looking at the projection of your voice, when I took all those voices that I had, and I just perfected the, per the projection of all those voices. So because of that, I never had one style of singing. Nobody taught me how to sing one way. I was taught, I taught myself how to sing a million ways. You know? And then I started looking at it like, I don't ever want nobody in the industry to ever feel like, like their talent is so crazy that like that they could stun on me and be like, yo, I'm not giving you this. Like they could it was kinda like a kinda like a scar from like when you're when you're coming up and you feel like damn, like nobody wanted to give me nothing. So you feel like I I'm never gonna put myself in a situation where I can't have what someone has to offer. So I was like, whatever guys have to I'll study every single person. Study, take time, micro Look at every single way they hit the chord, every every single thing. And I can manipulate it. And I and I can literally make it. Again, he's studying people, studying the melody, studying how they hit the chords, studying everything. He's not studying how they're mixing. He's not studying how they're mastering. You feel me? Like, come on. And because of that, when I started doing that, I started training myself to not only focus on my own sound, but to focus on every other sound. And then it was like, I need to be able to take it in any, anybody's lane that I want to take it. And that's why I'm so versatile. Because over the years, like that turned into, okay, I don't want to take it in any y'all niggas lane, actually. But all, all the great things that I've learned from all y'all. You became the feature you wanted to get. That's why it always sounds like I'm featuring myself on a lot of my songs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, I need a high, I need a, I need some high falsetto Maxwell sounding nigga. Oh no, I can use myself. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, I've heard yeah. people call you like the hook master. When you hear something like that, what does that mean to That's you? That's an honor, man. It's an honor for anybody who um, likes my music, number one, and anybody who cares to listen to it. Um, but also like for people who just feel like, 
Like I'm a great at this and like I'm a hook master. I, was good. I mean, you have so many different melodies. Do you have like a certain process? I just freestyle everything. I just I stopped writing things down when it came to melody and that changed my life. I just started going on the mic and just singing. And just like the first thoughts that came in my head always um, are like the most uh, interesting for me and also like, you know, just the most uh, provocative for me. Like, you know, just like what, when I hear music and I hear certain beats, it's hard for you to come up with, you know, a unique style or a certain format of like making this just sound obscure and like different than anything that, you, that you've heard before, you know? And for me, I've realized that that literally comes from me at the starting when I first hear a beat. All those ideas are so incredible in my head, but then by the time I get the paper out, it's like I don't already wasted all that. So I don't even take time to listen to beats anymore. Like once I hear the first like three seconds of a beat, I'm like, all right, put me in. Because I'm scared that if I play it, I'm gonna waste all my ideas by going well, to myself before I even go in the booth. So it's like the best ideas, I just harness and save them until I get right in the booth and then I just sing. So when you get in the booth and you first hear a beat, do you just hum the melody until you get the pocket you want in? Or are you actually I, yeah, putting I, lyrics to it? No, I just say a bunch of bullshit. Shit that just doesn't make no sense. Just I'll just be the dumbest shit. Dumb shit. Like, so like, like with Liddy again, with like Liddy again, it was like, oh, yeah, yeah. then that was like the, that was the, that was the acapella start, you know? And then it turned into, I've been the then I bought it, it's Liddy again. You know what I'm saying? But it'll just start like, and then I'll start look, trying different pockets and different things. And then I'll start doing like some weird like shit that like I just wouldn't, like now I do this a lot. Like I'll do some weird shit that I just wouldn't do. Like I wouldn't even think about saying and I just say it in the weirdest way. And then it just somehow, some way, just sounds so crazy that I just end up keeping it. And like now I just find like these dope ass songs and melodies by doing that shit. A lot of people look for the words and then they try to find the pockets of how to fit those words. Yeah. You're actually going for the pockets first. And then Go to the pockets. The words don't really, the words don't really matter, bro. It's the feeling that matters. You know what I'm saying? Nobody cares about the words, man. Like weird shit that I just wouldn't do. Like I wouldn't even think about saying and I just say it in the weirdest way. And then it just somehow, some way, just sounds so crazy that I just end up keeping it. And like now I just find like these dope ass songs and melodies by doing that shit.